Hi there, and welcome to the tarot reading for March 2024. Um, this is kind of a longer reading. I don't like it to be long, but I, I really, I couldn't help it. So um, this is a reading for our world, especially for those of us who live in the U.S. and the West. As I was thinking about the questions to ask, it occurred to me that maybe I could devote the entire reading to questions about our financial future. So once I decided that, then the questions came spontaneously, sort of boom, boom, boom. And as I pulled the cards, I decided we definitely needed to dive into the financial aspects of what we may be facing. So there were more questions than usual, so let's begin. First question is, or was, what is happening with our financial system in the next month? And I drew the Hierophant, number five, in the major arcana. Means it's a major issue. The second question was, what is the future of Bitcoin? And for that, I drew the two of pentacles. Question number three, what is the future of cryptocurrency in general? And I got the three of swords. Question number four, what do we need to know um, about the U.S. debt ceiling? And I drew the eight of swords. And then the last question, which was kind of one that just popped up, what is the future of government in the U.S.? And I got the five of pentacles. So let's take these questions one at a time. What is happening with our financial system in the next month? I'm not usually that specific, but I really wanted to see, okay, is there anything that we haven't heard or don't know or whatever? So all of us are inundated with reports almost daily of what's happening with our financial system. And they all say it can't continue like this. So I hesitated to ask this question. But we hadn't looked at the financial system for a while. And I hope the cards might give us something new to think about. The card drawn here was the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is a card that is often thought of as a papal card, a card related to the Pope. But the real meaning of this card is challenges to the outer mirror of humanity. Challenges to the outer mirror of humanity. So in essence, what it says is that the financial system is a mirror reflection of us. And we are about to challenge that system because it doesn't accurately reflect us or what we stand for. So this card appears to be the continuation of a theme that started last month when I asked the question, what can the cards tell us about the coming presidential election? And then I drew the tower card. Its message was twofold. One, the end of a power structure. And two, an unwillingness to support a system that presents itself as full and successful, but is internally empty and offers nothing to us. So now here's that same theme again, the need for internal and external to be in harmony with each other. So the question is, are you in harmony with the financial system? When we look at the card, we see three figures. The most prominent one being a figure seated on a gray throne and wearing a red robe. The red color of the robe symbolizes love and passion, as well as blood, wrath, and soil. The gray throne indicates the seat of power. And since we are asking about the financial system, 
This tells us that the financial system is the seat of power. We have given our power to money and those who run the financial system. The gray color of the throne points to detachment and indifference on the part of those in power. If that is a mirror reflection of us, then we have to ask ourselves, have we become detached and indifferent? Perhaps we have become indifferent to the fact that the financial system is not working for everyone. As long as we have what we need, we are indifferent to the needs of others. This works only until the system is not working for the majority. And then the whole thing collapses, taking everyone down with it. The figure on the throne has one hand raised in a sign of blessing. But this sign is the sign of decision making that declares as above, so below, which basically is a statement that says, whatever I decide is what is. This asks us to be clear about who is deciding what, and are we in harmony with the money decision? The other hand of the figure on the throne is holding what is known as a threefold bishop staff, and he's wearing a threefold crown. These two symbols have interesting as well as complementary meanings. The threefold staff indicates that whoever or whatever is sitting on the throne, in this case, the financial system, it is the most powerful ruler in the world. So do we want our money to rule us or do we want to rule our money? The threefold staff also represents the need to include the spiritual side of money and finance in whatever system we have. And the specific message is, walk the spiritual path with practical feet. In other words, it's asking us to be realistic and yet mindful of the spirit of money. What is the spirit of money? It's to make life easier and better for all. So the threefold crown backs up that message. It backs up the spirit of money. And it tells us that with a well-built financial system, heaven and earth can be bridged. We could live fulfilled lives without want, hunger, or pain. Surprisingly, the crown encourages the people not to be sheep. Not to be sheep. And what is it we hear from preachers and pulpits? You know, only the sheep are getting into heaven. The goats, no way. They're lost. This is telling us do not be sheep. Think for yourself. So it calls for many shepherds to help navigate the changes and challenges to the financial system. How do we not be sheep? The answer, according to the card, is you must have a key. So if you look, you'll see the throne is sitting on a platform, and there are two keys hanging on the front of that platform. One key belongs to whoever or whatever is on the throne, but the other key belongs to the people subject to that throne. This represents the fact that decision-making is not solely in the hands of the CEOs and the elites managing the financial system. We also have a key. The keys represent competence. Competence. Can I say it again? <laughs> the keys represent competence which is the ability to successfully and efficiently manage the financial system we want. 
in this way, what was once the province of high priests and elites comes into balance. In the bottom corners of the card, we see the backs of two other figures. They are monks with tonsured heads. Tonsured means uh, to like shave the top and the back of the head, just leaving a ring of hair around the hairline. So the two monks represent the lower level people who carry out the decisions of the figure on the throne. This symbolizes the layers of separation between the decision makers and the people. Why aren't the people the decision makers? These tonsured heads represent the willingness to shave away the hair to allow the messages and the intuitions coming from God and the higher self to have direct access to consciousness. Since hair symbolizes thought, the hope here is that shaving away the hair, which is shaving away personal thoughts, will bring the kinds of thinking that results in good decisions imbued with the spirit of truth. However, the tonsured heads also represent the inability or unwillingness to think for oneself and only do as you're told. One monk is wearing a robe with roses on it, and the other monk wears a robe with lilies on it. The roses represent passion, pure intentions, and love, whereas the lilies represent beauty, comfort, ease, and faith in the self. All qualities that need to be deliberately maintained in a financial system. On each side of the card, there are large gray columns that extend off the card to the right and the left, as well as beyond the top of the card. And these columns represent large institutions, structures, and community organizations that extend uh, like beyond what can be seen. The message here is that the financial system has aspects of it that cannot be seen and are often ignored, usually to the detriment of both the system and the people who believe in that system. The sky is also gray, pointing to a lack of conscious attention to what has been happening with our money. I think I've already touched on this in other tarot readings lightly, but I want to highlight one of the important assumptions contained in all tarot decks or all tarot card decks. It is that the outer world is a reflection of the inner world of the human collective. And when these two worlds do not match, there will be problems. Difficult lessons learned, often in a chaotic setting. When the inner and the outer worlds do not match, the world does not make sense. People end up confused and struggling. And since our question is about what is happening with our financial system in the next month, the Hierophant card signals that we are about to face a mismatch between what we think and feel about the nature of our financial system and what that financial system truly is. Our finances and the financial system we rely on are very serious aspects of our daily lives. It is likely that the majority of people think of money as a means of trading for things they need or even as a means of survival. However, this might not be the case for the elites who control the financial system. If they think of it as a game, kind of like the game of Monopoly, for instance, this is a very different perspective with an entirely different set of assumptions, rules, ethics, and values. What happens when the game ends? 
for those who see money as a means of survival, the end of the game is a disaster. This card has one last message. It represents initiation and bridging. To successfully handle the initiation, to learn from it and make it across the bridge to the better world, the higher world, the heaven world, four things are necessary. Action, creativity, pioneering, and commitment. All of these are necessary in times of change during which a new world must be built. The Hierophant asks us to apply the sacred within each of us to the outer world. So I I have to comment. I asked the question about our financial system with the thought that it might shed some light on the events of the next month. But the answer is a stark reminder of our role in what occurs. There may be a major transition coming, and we heard that from every direction, but the message is, get your key and be ready to stand up for the spirit of money. This is backed up by the number five, which is considered to be a pivot point or a tipping point number. It forces decisions and it no longer allows one to just drift along. So keywords for the Hierophant are alliance, captivity, servitude, mercy, society, alignments, weakness, back to school, spiritual teachings, cycles, growth, the sacred within, and bringer of seasons. Question number two. What is the future of Bitcoin? The card drawn here is the two of pentacles. And in this card, you see a figure dancing on the shore with big, dark blue waves in the water behind him. And there are a couple of ships riding those high waves. The figure is wearing a reddish-brown tunic with a ragged or unfinished hem, a very tall red hat, red leggings, and green shoes. He is holding two pentacles, one in each hand, and surrounding them, sort of connecting them, is a green infinity symbol. The basic message of the Two of Pentacles is a sea change, a shift in life's focus, a sea change. It means everybody's moving in a different direction. A direct quote from one of my references says that when you draw this card, something, some possibility that was waiting in the wings comes forward and takes on new meaning. Bitcoin, I think it's a perfect answer to the question about the future of Bitcoin. The figure dancing on the shore is almost always an indication of having reached the end of our rope. There's an old saying, you know, you're going to dance at the end of a rope. Give somebody enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Have we, uh, are we about to dance at the end of our rope? Ah, in this case, it might not be the end of our rope. It might be the end of solid ground and needing to be ready to cross the great water, meaning deal with huge emotions. However, there is no other shore in sight. And this combined with the number two, points to the need to explore, to be creative. Two is the number of creativity. To find new ground because there is no other choice. The two ships riding those big waves in the background, 
tell us that we will likely need to get on board and go with the flow of events for a while before finding solid ground again. Things might not be resolved or fixed quickly. Between the dancing, whose message is to like move in rhythm with the changes in life and the needs that will force us to ride those waves of change, this card signals a period of financial challenges and some difficulty. The reddish brown tunic symbolizes passion and business. The business world runs on financial transactions. Could it run on Bitcoin? The ragged hem on the tunic symbolizes a complete unwillingness to be hemmed in. The tunic is unhemmed. And this warns us that business may become ragged and uneven if we go with Bitcoin as our financial base. Central bank digital currencies would hem us in and leave us tightly controlled. But Bitcoin transactions do not happen at the speeds that people living in the U.S. and the West are used to. So this poses a considerable inconvenience to business. The red leggings symbolize something we have long been warned about. The possibility of a sudden and wild dash into Bitcoin by those who don't know or understand cryptocurrencies very well. The tall red hat backs this up, warning against overconfidence in buying Bitcoin without really knowing how to manage it. The green shoes and the green infinity symbols surrounding the pentacles represent freshness and vitality, as well as growth. But they also warn of naivete and lack of experience. The questions become, well, how well do you think you would do as your own bank manager in charge of security of both wealth and transactions? Can you vet others successfully and with confidence? The pentacles themselves are the suit representing material objects, the body, health, one's home, and your possessions, all things of this world. The pair of pentacles surrounded by the green infinity symbol represent ongoing cycles, such as the boom and bust cycles that we suffer through regularly. You know, you go from one extreme to the other and back again. So Bitcoin can be seen as both good and bad. Perhaps the good sign would be that people feel they have an answer to the financial crisis. But the bad side would be the lack of infrastructure for smooth and easy transactions. The majority of people lack experience with this type of money. Another good side, bad side possibility would be the idea that central bank digital currencies have been avoided, but the control exercised by BlackRock would not. The number two on this card represents duality, polarization, creativity, and diversity of options. It is considered to be a feminine number. And it signifies the second stage of some process or situation. Might that be the second stage in the breakdown of our original financial system and the move toward a new one? This card is known as the Lord of Change. And sometimes it's known as the Lord of Harmonious Change. That's a possibility for us. It often indicates the period of agitation that comes before settlement of something causing difficulty and strife. So the key words are dialogue, decision point, inner directed, staying afloat, 
starting something new, difficulty, adventure, weighing options, steady effort, ups and downs, and juggling commitments. Question number three. What is the future of cryptocurrency in general? And the card drawn in response to this question was the three of swords. When you look at this card, you see a large red heart pierced by three swords. There are heavy gray clouds and rain in the background. And there is no figure in the picture, only the heart. So, the traditional reading for this card is one of pain, harm, and loss, sorrow. Not the answer we would want to our question about the future of cryptocurrencies in general. However, there are a few things that can be said here that go a bit deeper. One is that the suit of swords represents the mind, the intellect, and thought. When swords pierce the heart, you could say that the heart and the mind are coming together to face the truth. It is as if illusions are being pierced, and the essentials of reality are now being contemplated by people who are no longer pretending or lying to themselves. Rain usually means tears and sadness, but is sometimes seen as a gift from heaven to earth. The gift may be a step toward a world that is more in alignment with the goodness in the heart of humanity. There's no indication as to whether all cryptocurrencies or only some may bring disappointment. But the deeper message of this card is that the cryptocurrency situation may end up bringing something that was suspected or intuited by the heart into sharp focus, forcing us to think and act in ways that nurture the world and keep it together. The number three is considered to represent the triangle, especially the triangular relationship. And this symbolizes interference by a third party in a relationship, system, or situation that was previously stable. Three is associated with a change of fortunes that is not good. However, it teaches a lesson that brings understanding. This card is known as the Lord of Sorrow. And keywords are delay, removal, division, rupture, stormy weather for the emotions, diplomacy needed, thieves, lawsuits, confusion, and loss. Question number four. What do we need to know about the U.S. debt ceiling? This is also a topic we've heard much about. But my hope in asking was to see if there were some new and hopeful path that we hadn't thought about. The card drawn here was the Eight of Swords, a card that calls for those making the decisions around the debt ceiling to cast off the bindings that tie their hands and commit to the bonds of duty. Cast off the bindings that tie their hands and commit to the bonds of duty. This card came up last October when the question asked was, what information or insight can the cards offer regarding the big life-changing event we are sensing? So my question was, will that big event eventually have something to do with the U.S. debt ceiling? This card shows a woman whose arms are tightly bound to her sides. 
She is blindfolded and standing in a prison of swords that surround her on three sides. She stands on muddy ground. There's a castle high on a hill behind her, and the sky above is gray. The message of this card is not a statement. It's a question. And that question asks, are you bound up or duty bound? Are you bound up or duty bound? Since we are asking about the U.S. debt ceiling, this question will go to those who are making the decision about the debt ceiling. It hints at a deeper problem than just the debt ceiling because it indicates that those making the decision may not be free to decide anything at all. The blindfold points to being unable to see the way out of the current predicament, even though they're free to walk away from the prison at any time because the swords do not enclose them completely. It also represents being unable to see how we would move forward if the debt ceiling were not raised and the U.S. was forced to default. The bonds around the arms are said to represent immobility, often due to embarrassment. Certainly a problem if the people in Washington, D.C. have been compromised by bribes a honeypot, or shady dealings of the past. The gray sky symbolizes detachment, uncaring, a bad atmosphere, and quarrelsome approach to the whole debt ceiling issue. A castle can be seen through the swords, almost making it look as though the castle has been imprisoned in the same way as the figure standing in the mud. The positive side of the castle represents looking after oneself and one's interests, something that could be considered good, unless there's a selfish or greedy motive present. The negative side of the castle represents imprisonment, isolation, thinking you are above others, and being cut off from the world, something that may be a result for the entire U.S. if the debt ceiling is raised to the point that we collapse into oblivion. This card is known as the Lord of Interference, and it symbolizes that some kind of major force has interfered in the leadership of a group, institution, or system of governance. The number eight is highly related to political issues, and it signifies the ability to manifest things. When you control money and the levers of power, you can manifest many things. But this card symbolizes failure to do so in ways that benefit anyone, including those with the money and the power. Eight is the number of starting over, starting fresh, by letting go of the past. And it's also the card of maturity, wealth, and political power. Keywords for the Eight of Swords are mastery, worldly involvement, versatile, narrow mindedness, frustration. Lack of perspective, political orientation, power, gain, self discipline, temporary bondage, putting in order, bad news, and conflict. Question number five What is the future of our government in the US? And, you know, this question was almost an afterthought. After the array of challenging cards drawn for the first four questions, I was afraid this tarot reading would be way too long because I usually only ask two or three questions. But then, as I contemplated the difficult situations indicated by the previous cards, 
I wondered what the future of government in the U.S. might be, and I decided to draw one more card. I was sure it was going to be something positive and encouraging, something that would balance the previous cards. But the card drawn was the Five of Pentacles. This is the card of destitution and worry. Regarding destitution, this card says, sometimes you have to throw in the towel, accept defeat, and come to terms with what is. Regarding worry, the card points out that worry focuses on the what ifs of tomorrow and the if onlys of the past. And in this way, completely avoids dealing with the realities of the present, which always need to be dealt with in a clear and focused manner. On the card, you can see a blind man and a lame man walking through the darkness of night. The lame man is wearing a plague bell. Plague, P-L-A-G-U-E. It is snowing. And the two of them walk through the snow past a church window that is brightly illuminated with five pentacles in the window design. The blind man is helping the lame man on the crutches to move along, and the lame man can see, so he is guiding the blind. Since our question is about the future of the U.S. government, this card says that hard times are in store for those trying to run the country. In one of those amazing synchronicities between the question and the card drawn, the message of the Five of Pentacles is, United we stand. And in doing so, the worst of our difficulties will be solved. Sounds like the motto of the U.S. The blind man symbolizes being unable to see what is really needed. Is our government unable to see us and what we need? The lame man on crutches symbolizes being unable to carry anything forward because he must handle the crutches that hold him up. His efforts to move forward are also slow and laborious indicating that the government may be unable to serve the people in an efficient and timely manner, if at all. And the efforts the government does put forth will not be sufficient to resolve the problems that arise. Those efforts will be considered lame. Crotches tell us that the government may be using all of its resources to prop itself up. But crutches also send the message that solutions are available. They are found in the cooperation demonstrated by the blind man and the lame man. The two figures are walking past a church. And churches symbolize beliefs and trust in something greater than the self. Since the two figures are walking past the church, this indicates that there's been a loss of belief and trust in the government. Windows symbolize seeing things through a new framework. And the brightly illuminated window with the pentacles in it indicates that both people and government need a new view of government and its role in the world. The pentacles in the window also represent what is known as the quintessence of a situation. The meaning of the word quintessence is the central component that is intrinsic to the nature of something. The central component that's intrinsic to the nature of something. So the quintessence of government is to prevent hardship and need among its people. 
The task of a government is to devote itself to the relief of poverty, cold, thirst, hunger, and to manage things in a way that allows people to build wealth and well-being for all. The plague bell worn by the lame man is a very old and unusual symbol. A plague bell was something that lepers or others with serious diseases had to wear to alert people to the dangers of infection. The collapse of governments has been accompanied by plagues and diseases because when governments stop governing in ways that protect and serve their people, stress, crime, and disease run amok. People stop cooperating with governments. Has the government sown the seeds of its own destruction by pushing the pandemic story? I'll close this question with another of those synchronicities seen so often in the tarot. The first question we asked was about the financial system, what's happening in the financial system. And the card drawn was number five, the Hierophant. This last question asked about the future of government in the U.S., and we drew the Five of Pentacles. These two cards are directly related to one another. Both indicate the test of a population. What is the test? Both cards demand that a population face its own darkness, its own fears and weaknesses. Both cards ask that the population begin to integrate their light, their gifts, their skills, talents, and resources. Both cards demand that a population reveal the artistry of who they are and what they can create as a group of individuals, businesses, or nations. And both cards are cards of manifestation. Their message is, it's time to manifest. So let's not manifest more war and destruction. Let's manifest a world of beauty, creativity, and abundance. This card is associated with the number five, and the five represents a tipping point. A pivot in decision-making, a pivot in beliefs, a tipping point in terms of loyalties. This card is known as the Lord of Worry and Material Troubles, and the keywords are crisis, instability, effort, income. Values, change, urge to sustain, money problems, strain, hard times, domestic disruption, worry, breakup, and out in the cold. So that's it for our questions this month. So let's summarize all of the above. Question number one, what happens to our financial system in the next month? And the card drawn was the Hierophant, number five in the Major Arcana. Major Arcana cards point to major change and big issues coming our way. The message of this card is the need for vision, hopes, and dreams held internally to match the reality and activity of the external world or things will fall into chaos. As such, this card says we are about to face a mismatch between what we think about the nature of our financial system and what that system truly is. We may think of our financial system as a means of filling needs and surviving but the elites in control of that system may see it as a game. The card is a reminder that we are the decision makers who will have to fix the situation. 
And we are encouraged to bring a spiritual component into that effort. The specific message is walk the spiritual path with practical feet. What is the spirit with which we want our financial system to operate? And how do we implement that realistically? Question number two was, what is the future of Bitcoin? And the card drawn for this question was the Two of Pentacles, whose message is, some possibility that was waiting in the wings comes forward and takes on new meaning. Wow. We may choose to go with Bitcoin because we do not want to be hemmed in or controlled by other options such as central bank digital currencies. But Bitcoin transactions are slow and the necessary infrastructure is not in place yet. Question number three. What is the future of cryptocurrencies in general? And the card here was not very encouraging. It was the three of swords. This is the card of pain, harm, sorrow, and loss. In spite of these difficulties, this card has a couple of benefits to it because it indicates a coming together of heart and mind and the end of illusions and foolish fantasies. It points to the recognition that there has been interference in cryptocurrency systems by a third party that does not have our best interests at heart. Question number four, what do we need to know about the U.S. debt ceiling? And the card drawn here was the Eight of Swords, another difficult card that points to the inability of those making decisions around the debt ceiling to see how we could move forward if they do not raise the debt ceiling and we end up defaulting. Their hands are tied and embarrassment may be a factor in this. They cannot see the population they are supposed to be serving or the needs of that population. And they are standing in a muddy mess that they cannot see their way out of. If they raise the death ceiling, it will be because they think they have no other choice. And question number five, what is the future of the U.S. government? And the card drawn here was the Five of Pentacles, again, indicating difficulty on a major scale. This is the card of destitution. It says the government is likely to be crippled by lack of money and lack of support because of its failure to protect and serve the population. People may stop believing in government, which is a critical sign of disintegration. The Five of Pentacles is highly related to the Hierophant, which was the card drawn in answer to the first question about the financial system. And together, these two cards demand that the population face its darkness, fears, weaknesses, and bring forth its light, gifts, talents, and resources. These two cards ask us to reveal our artistry as a people and to manifest what we envision. So I'm going to close by saying that when I started out, I thought it was a good idea to focus completely on the financial side of things, but I wasn't so sure of that when all but one of the cards pulled pointed to drastic problems and challenges. I was especially dismayed by that last card, the Five of Pentacles. For many years, I've been aware that the U.S. may break up. And maybe that will happen, but it's not absolutely necessary. We need a government, but we need one that's honest and transparent. We need a working financial system but not one that controls us. It has to be one that we control. 
Without a working financial system, we can't really have a government. Without a government, we can't really have a country. And if we don't have a country, some enterprising government somewhere else in the world will step in and take over. And we will lose all of our efforts to maintain self-governance and make that next step up into a new dimension of life based on our development. So as we head into the coming year, stay observant. Listen to the words people use. Look behind the curtain frequently to assess what's really going on. Be willing to get involved when needed and step back when not needed. Be aware that there are many good people in places of power that are in alignment with us. Be willing to support those who are willing to step up. So thank you for listening and have a wonderful month. It looks like it's going to be very interesting.